Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson, and this is my review for Rambo, First Blood Part 2, which came out in 1985 and is the sequel to the first one, First Blood. First Blood was obviously based on a book, but the ending of the book is very different from the movie because they wanted to give it a semi-happy ending where Rambo, instead of committing suicide, ends up going to prison. So how do you make a sequel to a very small low-budget action movie. The simple answer? You go bigger. You amp everything up. So this movie opens up with John Rambo in prison, and he's once again played by Sylvester Stallone. He's soon visited by Colonel Troutman, played once again by Richard Crenna, who I kept pronouncing his name Krina in the review for First Blood, so I apologize for that. But anyway, Troutman approaches John with an offer to basically get him out of prison if he goes back to Vietnam and saves POWs that are being held there. That's what you'd think, although technically the mission is for him to go to Vietnam, take pictures of the camps just to prove to the American public and American intelligence agencies that there's still soldiers being held there, and maybe. Just maybe, if Rambo is successful, he'll get a presidential pardon. So, obviously John agrees to the mission, and he's sent back to Vietnam. Now, First Blood is a masterpiece. I absolutely love it. It's one of the best action movies of the 80s, and one of the best action movies of all time. And while it's not as iconic as something like Rocky, it's still an iconic movie in its own right, and one of Stallone's best. Rambo First Blood Part Two is an iconic movie but maybe not for the right reasons, or the same reasons that First Blood is iconic. This movie plays more like Terminator 2 in the sense that you have this very first movie that was sort of low budget, almost an independent movie of sorts, and then you make a sequel where you give it all the money in the world, and you just amp up everything to 11. And in terms of Terminator 2, I think it worked out to the point where it's a sequel better than the original. And with Rambo First Blood Part 2, it just so is not better than First Blood. This is actually complicated because technically, I don't think First Blood Part 2 is a good movie and because it's so devoid of what made the original First Blood so iconic. It almost feels like a completely different movie. I mean, it is, since they send Rambo back to Vietnam, and it's more of an action movie than First Blood is, but it just loses the heart. It loses that human touch that made First Blood such a good and even personal movie. And speaking of Terminator, I was actually shocked to find out that the screenplay for this was co-written by James Cameron. Yeah, this was the little project he did in between The Terminator and Aliens, and supposedly James Cameron had a lot written for this movie in terms terms of character. Like, for example, the POWs actually got their own bit of characteristics, they got their own backstories, which you'd never see in the movie at all. So that's why when you see the POWs, they're just there. You don't know their names, you don't know their personalities, and they're just there to be rescued. They are pretty much MacGuffins when you get right down to it, because most of the movie is dedicated to our hero, John Rambo. And I gotta say, Sylvester Stallone, He's not that good in this movie. He's not awful per se, but when you look at First Blood, Stallone always has this look of confusion, and you buy it because he's being mistreated by the police force, so he just doesn't understand why they're bullying him or why they're pushing him so much. With this movie, Stallone still has that same look of confusion, but it just doesn't work this time around. Rambo just comes across as more clueless than anything else, just doesn't really know what's going on, and it's not... I don't know, I just don't buy it this time around. I mean, a lot of the performances in this movie are just kind of a mixed bag. Richard Crenna as Colonel Troutman is very good in the movie. Not as good as in First Blood, but luckily he's got that voice and he can deliver his lines very well. You have Charles Napier in this movie as Murdoch, and he just makes for one of those classic 80s assholes, and he does a competent job. And then you have Julia Nixon as Ko, Rambo's partner in Vietnam, which, hey, compared to the first movie where there were no female characters at all, it's really nice to see a woman in this series who's tough, can handle her own, and is just badass all around. On the other hand, though, man, is this a bad performance. Julia Nixon is just doing this 
terrible Vietnamese accent, or it's just a plain Asian accent because you can't tell where it's coming from, and it's obviously fake. She reminds me of Hong Chao in Downsizing, where these two actresses don't have an authentic Vietnamese accent, and it not only comes across as fake, but it just feels a tad racist. And I think it's worse here in Rambo First Blood Part 2, because there are points in this movie where Julia Nixon will say things like, go back to America, and then the very next sentence she'll say, then you go back America? It's just, it's sloppy in terms of what words she leaves out. It, it's, it's rough. And then they try to bring in this romantic subplot out of nowhere near the end of the movie that immediately gets disrupted once Ko is killed. And with her death, I... I won't say I didn't feel anything because she did have her really cool moments here and there. But at the same time, this love dynamic between her and Rambo was never developed. And when you get right down to it, she's just fridged. However, the one good thing I can say about this character getting fridged is that it leads into the very reason why you watch Rambo First Blood Part 2. And it is the over-the-top, cheesy 80s action that defines this movie as well as Commando, which also came out in 1985. I'll get back to Commando a little later, but the last 30 minutes of this movie is just so... It's unapologetically over the top in terms of its violence. It's so gratuitous. There are explosions left and right. And it's a funny contrast with First Blood where Rambo killed only one guy by pure accident. But then in First Blood Part 2, everyone goes. The Vietnamese, the Russians, everyone gets murdered in this movie by John Rambo. And yeah, it's so gratuitous, it's so over the top, it's so downright cliche, and I enjoy every second of it. <laughs> now getting back to Commando, which is actually the better movie, this or Commando? Because I find it hilarious that both these movies came out in 1985, both movies starred the biggest action stars of the decade, and both of them became the staple of cheesy 80s action movies. But for my money, I like Commando a little more, because Commando is its own movie. It has a tone that it's established right off the bat, to where it's not meant to be taken seriously at all. And it doesn't have any grand political statement that A, gets muddled in the entire movie, or B, becomes outdated by today's standards. Because with Rambo First Blood Part 2, there is a political stance in this movie, and it really paints a picture that Rambo is the right-wing action hero. And I'm not going to get into like the right-wing, left-wing politics here, but I will say that when you watch First Blood, the politics in that movie of police brutality and how vets are treated when they come home, no matter if it's Vietnam or Iraq, it holds up today. And with this movie, the politics are so outdated that if you consider yourself to be a Democrat and hate this movie just because of the politics, you're kind of looking into this movie a little too deep because these are incredibly outdated politics that do not age well in any shape or form. And also the fact that this movie is an inferior sequel to one of the best action movies ever made, kind of have to take points off for that. But I will give Rambo First Blood Part 2 this. I prefer Commando over this movie, but Rambo First Blood Part 2 came first and is the one that started all of these trends that you see in 80s action movies. This is the most classic Rambo movie ever. When you think of Rambo, this is the movie you think about when you think of that character and the franchise. And I honestly can see why this movie made the huge amount of money that it did, because we lost the Vietnam War. People were upset that we lost the war, and it was mainly due to poor leadership. So the fact that this movie comes out and is pretty much the equivalent to us winning the Vietnam War, I can see it definitely being a crowd-pleasing movie in that aspect and just leaves you with a good feeling. I mean, like I said before, the last 30 minutes of this movie is awesome, and the way it ends is just like... Wow, that was incredibly corny, but man, do I feel good after watching it. Huh? Now, this is actually a difficult movie to rate because personally, I don't think Rambo First Blood Part 2 is that good. But at the same time, it's not incompetent. It's well made for the kind of movie it is. It has some good action scattered throughout. It's got some great one-liners like Murdoch, 
I'm coming to get you. Again, it's iconic in its own right, but it's almost a completely different beast from the first movie. So, I... Hmm... I will say watch at your own risk. If you go into this movie expecting it to be a very cheesy, over-the-top 80s action movie, then it's going to deliver because the action's exciting. And Jerry Goldsmith, while his score is not as good as First Blood or some of his other scores, it still does its job. But if you're expecting this to be a movie similar to First Blood, then you are going to be sorely disappointed because... It has a very different tone altogether, and when the movie tries to be serious, it just doesn't work as well as it does in First Blood. And it's also important to note that this movie actually is a Razzie winner for Worst Picture, which I think is a bit much. I mean, nowadays, I don't even take the Razzies seriously anymore, to the point where I'm just like, screw the Razzies. But out of all the movies that I've seen that have been nominated for or won Worst Picture, this really did not deserve to win because it's no Battlefield Earth, it's no Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, it's no Holmes and Watson. It is not that bad of a movie. I mean, there are definitely some very bad things in this movie. Like I mentioned, Julia Nixon, uh, some of the dialogue in this movie is awful. The song by Frank Stallone is just dumb all around. And one thing I really didn't mention beforehand was sometimes the cinematography is downright obnoxious. There are a few points in this movie where it's shot using the Pro Mist filter, which is pretty much this filter that makes everything look shiny. But at the end of the day, it just makes the frame look fuzzy and blurry. And it's like you just want to stop everything, grab a handkerchief or a cloth, and just wipe the camera lens to try to get rid of that shine. It's the filter equivalent of a Dutch angle and just as ugly in my opinion but outside of that again it's not that bad of a movie you mean to tell me that this movie won the Razzie for worst picture and yet Jaws the Revenge didn't win worst picture and Aliens vs Predator Requiem didn't even get nominated fuck that like fuck all that that is just crap on a stick and really goes to show how much I hate the Razzies now, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's just not that bad of a movie, but it is one of those things where it's like, you either take it or you leave it. And there you go, that's my review for Rambo First Blood Part 2. Next week we're going to be talking about Rambo 3, which is the only Rambo movie that I have not seen, so... This is going to be interesting. But first, I want to know what you guys think about Rambo First Blood Part 2. If you've seen it, what did you think? If you've seen Commando as well, which of these two movies do you think is better and why? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.